Face the Music, that song is probably one of my favorites on the album. The whole beat started with the sample. I'm not gonna divulge what it is actually. With that, I kind of started building around the sample to kind of fill out the mid portions, adding a pad and adding the lead synth on the top and kind of like reverbed it out to just make it real like expansive and big. When I was putting the record together, I was looking for something for Tidra to actually be on. She had actually asked to be on the record before I had even had something for her. I was like, man, I definitely want you on State of the Art. In my head, I've been producing for Tidra Moses like for my whole career, just in terms of like, you know, when I think of someone singing like R&B, soul R&B, kind of on top of what I do, that would be the person. Hey, what's up? I'm Tidra Moses, the lioness. Trackademics has been one of the producers that have helped me stay within my sound and still take it to another level. And once I was with him, and he's like, yeah, you know, this sound, we call it Champagne Soul. And he said that once to me, and I stole it. <laughs> it's exquisite, it's sophisticated, it's raw, but it's soul, you know, and it's, and it's in pocket, and, and Track has definitely been influential with that. He's my muse. <laughs> When I first, first met her, um, you know, in a working capacity, um, was actually, it was crazy. It happened on MySpace. <laughs> yeah, I met Track on MySpace. I actually was listening to some of his music that was in his player, and I sent him a message, and I said, I really, really love your music. I would love to work with you. Apparently, she had heard um, a remix I did of Platinum Pie Piper. Uh, I did a remix of On a Cloud. And when she heard it, she felt compelled to search me out. So she hit me up on the email and I was like, yes. I responded and I sent her some beats. Well, I had a CD that was labeled Trackademics that I would put in my car, in my CD changer, along with other Sade records or, you know, Prince records or whatever. And I would put his, his beat CD in and listen to the beats and write songs on my way to wherever, to the studio or whatever. And just never laid them and then eventually I laid them. And probably two years after I laid the first thing, I sent Track the actual record. for Face the Music. When I sent the record to Tidra, it had one verse on it. And the first verse um, was kind of, kind of about the courtship. People used to ask me, how did y'all get together? It's like the opening line. And, and it's just kind of me recounting the whole thing. Because at, by this point, Track of the Missing Eye, we're real cool. He sends me the beat to Face the Music with a verse on it. And the record came to me very, very, very easy. I wasn't concerned if Track would like it, if he'd be into it, because he and I just connect so easily when I write a record I have no worries. When she sent me the hook I was like oh wow this is a this is amazing right I was really I was really excited so I then wrote the second verse and the second verse is kind of solidifying everything kind of solidifying the fact that that yeah we're not going anywhere we, we look good together we you know you're the right one for me I'm the right one for you music it's never gonna you know it's never gonna go anywhere. I'm such a big fan of Teacher Moses too it's not a secret. She had my favorite album of 2004 Throughout the second verse, there's sprinklings of Tidra Moses song titles, right? Of just some, you know, just, just random ones. If you're a true Tidra fan, you'll be able to pick that up. I was really excited about that record, and, and when I hear, heard it back, because I hadn't heard it in a long time, I had gone to the Bayport show, and he played it for me, and I was very, very proud of the record, and I think we, we did a great job on that record, and I hope, I hope people can feel it. I've gotten a few tweets about it, so I think people really, really feel that record. What I wanted to convey with the song is that the relationship with music is just so eternal. And it is like a love story, because there is a definite point, you know, as a kid, you fall in love with music, however it is, however it happens, it's just things that wake you up. And once you, once you get, you, you hear something that wakes you up, you're kind of like on the hunt for that same feeling. And then you're introduced to new things and new things. And it becomes almost an, an obsession. It's something that at the end of the day, you would do it regardless or you'd be into it regardless of if it made you money or if it made you look cool or whatever it is. It's just something that you, you're into. And I think this song is like a proclamation straight up. This is my love. Regardless of whatever may come, whatever may go, I'm, you know, music is staying.